Hey, Jason here. Today's video, I'm going to answer the question, question, should you invest in New Oriental Education? Stock ticker EDU. This is an investment analysis for FDA 9992 on YouTube. Um, this is now three or four for you. Um, hope you've been enjoying them. Before I get to that, though, I gotta let you know you can get the series of podcasting and learn more for free on all major podcasting platforms. There we go. Stitcher, Anchor, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, and more. You can get this as part of the Value Investing in Your Car podcast anywhere in the world for free. If you like this video and our other videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell um, so you're notified every time we release new videos and we release new videos all the time. If you see my other videos, I apologize. Again, I, as I say in every video, I don't want to do this, but I have to do this because every time I forget to do it, I get discussing comments in YouTube. So, this is for informational purposes only. Um, I do not short sell ever, so I do not profit off of any stock I talk negatively about. I do also do not own any stock in a um, long position for any stock I talk positively about. These videos are done at the request of viewers um, who want me to analyze certain stocks for them. I'm doing it to help them and also to help you learn how to um, evaluate stocks better, faster, and more efficiently so you can find potentially great investment faster and better. Um, because these are requested by viewers, I purposely do not um, look at what the company does at all before I do these videos. If I'm not familiar with them, of course. If I am familiar with them, then obviously I know. But <laughs> most companies I do not know because they're requested by viewers. Um, because of that, I, that means I don't care about the story. I don't care about the, what the company's plan to do. I don't says, care what it says it's going to do in the future. I don't care about any of that until far, late, far later in the analysis. At this early stage, it has to meet my um, strict criteria here to get to the next stage of the analysis. If it doesn't meet that, based on the numbers, again, I don't care about the story. Why should you listen to anything I have to say? In the first nine years of my career, I uh, produced 23.5% average annual investment returns for the portfolios I manage. That puts me just behind the great Warren Buffett in the first nine years of his career when he was at the Buffett uh, Limited Partnership when he produced 24.2% returns on average. When, and those numbers legitimately make me one of the best stock pickers in the entire world over the last nine years. Um, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to prove to you that I actually know what I'm talking about a little bit. Okay, so apologize for that don't want to do that don't like doing it have to do it okay let's get to the analysis alrighty again we're looking at new oriental education and technology group stock ticker edu today I'm not familiar with this company I've not researched them before um, decent ish Forward P, I don't care much for forward P, but it's at 22. I look for anything under 20, low-ish. Uh, price sales, again, I don't care about this number at all, but this is one sign. We have done some videos where we've seen price sales like above 50, 60. I think one was even like 90, something like that. So this is one sign the company might be decently uh, valued. Okay. EDU, founded in 1993, is the largest well-established one-stop shopping private educational services provider in China. EDU has had over 52.8 million student enrollments, including about 8.4 million enrollments in fiscal 2019. As of third quarter fiscal 2020, EDU had a network of 1,416 learning centers, including 99 schools, 12 bookstores, and access to a national network of online and offline bookstores through blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is let's say services and products to different age groups, including you. So they tutor kids in K through 12 as well. So this looks like maybe a Chinese version of a charter school, maybe. Uh, private educational service, so private schooling in China, not a charter school. Those are considered public schools. Okay. Revenue has exploded from 558 million in 2011 to 3.9 billion rounded up in the trailing 12 month period. Um, operating income has also exploded on an absolute basis. However, I can tell just by looking at the numbers that their operating profits are down significantly. That is not a good thing. Um, operating income going up 
is a good thing. Operating income as a percentage, which is the margin part of revenue going down significantly, almost, what, 60%? Um, in the last decade is not good. That means they're having a hard time as they continue to grow to control their costs. Um, essentially, this means they're having to run three times harder now than they were in 2011 to earn a similar amount of profits based on their profit margin. They funded some of their growth with share issuances. They've increased share count by so about 70 million shares in the last decade. Not a huge amount since they have 1.6 billion shares outstanding, so not a huge deal, but still not great. The book value per share has exploded from 44 cents a share in, and those are US dollars per share, um, in 2012, all the way up to 289 per share in the trailing 12 month period. That's a very good sign that the underlying value of the intrin intrinsic value of the company is going up. Again, if you see my other videos with the one caveat of goodwill, which we'll check on the balance sheet. ROICs way down as well. Um, I look for anything above 10% on a consistent basis until 2018. They were hitting that every year by far. They were far surpassing that actually. Um, since 2019 though, they have not hit that number once and they've been below it at 7% uh, now and they were at almost 18%, just under 18% in 2011. Again, same thing as the operating margin going down. Essentially, it means they're having to work harder to earn a um, to earn profits, um, which lowers their <laughs> which lowers the margins. Why is that happening? Because their costs are increasing, which I can show you right here. Their cost of goods sold is up by about eight percentage points in the last decade. Selling general administrative costs. There we go. About about three percentage points. Those are huge reasons why their profitability on operating and return on invested capital basis are lower. Free cash flow sales is fantastic, however. I look for anything above 5% on a consistent basis. They are still surpassing that, even though it's down from about 30% in 2011 to 16.2% in the trailing 12 month period, so about half. So all of their important profitability metrics, um, operating margin, ROIC, and free cash flow to sales are down between 40 and 60% in the last decade. Um, again, that's not good. <laughs> um, likely means a couple things. A, well, they're definitely not keeping control of costs as they grow. Um, B, this may mean they're having more competition, um, salaries are rising, um, could be other things as well. We'll hit on those as we go further into this analysis. A good amount of cash on the balance sheet, 62.2% of their balance sheet as of last quarter is in cash and short-term investments. That's a good thing. Gives them more margin of safety. Their debt levels are ultra low. Only 3.1% of their balance sheet is in short-term or long-term debt. That is very good, especially when you have the high cash levels as well. Gives you a huge margin of safety. Um, love the cash conversion cycle. Frankly, I don't know why they have one because they're an educational company. So cash conversion cycles for like hard asset companies, unless they make some of their money from selling things like books. Like physical books. Um, test preparation. Oh, they do offer or offline bookstores, online and offline bookstores. Okay, so that's why. Um, probably not a huge deal. But it has oops, gone down over time, which means the company is getting more efficient, um, which leads me to believe that this is a sm relatively small part of their business because as we saw with the profitability margins they're not getting more efficient they're getting less efficient um so this is probably a small portion of their operations okay that the equity um i look for anything on one generally depending on the company's cash flow levels and operating profit levels but yeah so this is very good at 0.41 They have $6.1 billion in cash, cash, cool, and short-term investments. 
that is very interesting because that is almost half of their market cap. It's about 40% of the market cap is in cash, cash equivalent in short-term investments. That offers a huge margin of safety, um, and that is incredibly interesting. Health maturity securities current. So looks like they own a significant amount, about $3.4 billion in assets, um, probably stocks, actually held to, held to maturity securities. These, these might be bonds um, with that kind of wording, um, which is frankly interesting. I don't know why an educational company would hold a bunch of bonds, but the way that's worded, that makes it seem like it's bonds, which is even more interesting. Okay, decent amount of land because of their schools. That makes sense. Goodwill. So their book Goodwill has not gone up significantly over time, which means the book value per share um, going up pretty significantly is a very good sign that the underlying intrinsic value of the company is going up over time as well, which let me check the stock chart to see what this has done over time. And that proves out because since about here, 2011, their shares are up 200%, which is in part because of the revenue growth, um, their operating profits and free cash flow is going up on an absolute dollar basis. And also because the underlying intrinsic value of the company is going up over time. They have, however, fallen significantly since December, I would want to know why that happened. Um, but overall, they're still up 200% since 2011 because of that underlying intrinsic value going up over time. Okay. Long-term investments. They have... Deferred liabilities. They have a decent amount of deferred liabilities. Almost $2 billion. They are current. I would guess those are things like maybe salaries or something. I'm not really sure what that would be that is so large for an educational company. Again, interesting. To figure all this stuff out that I'm uh, that I'm saying is interesting, we'd have to get to the next stage or the two stages from now from in the analysis um, to actually start digging into the financial statements, or I mean the, um, the annual reports, not the financial statements. That's what we're doing now. Okay, very clean balance sheet. Some interesting questions I would want answered, but very clean. Okay, cash flow statement is pretty much nothing on it, which is interesting. I wonder if that's a data feed issue. So we can't look at the balance or the cash flow statement because there's frankly almost nothing on it. So as of this stage, um, EDU looks like a good potential investment. I would want to know why its margins are lower, significantly lower over the last decade. Um, I would want to figure that out. I would want to figure out some of the stuff on the balance sheet that I talked about, specifically the um, the held to maturity investments. I would want to know what those are, and if they are bonds, why a educational company is holding what three over three billion dollars in bonds? That doesn't make sense unless it's some kind of a um, thing in China. Maybe they have to have some kind of reserves in case they get sued. I'm not really sure. That's that happens in some other industries, but still, that's would be kind of odd. Okay, here's where most companies go to die for me, and this is where this one will go to die for me too. Um, I can already tell by looking at the valuations. Again, I don't care much for PE, price to cash flow, or forward PE, but I want these to be under 20 to show the company's undervalued. Uh, PE is 35.8, rounded up. Price to cash flow is 14.9, rounded up. Uh, forward PE is 22.4, so those are kind of on average about over um, 20, which shows the company is our value. Here's the, big, here's the big number though. Enterprise value debit. This is the most important number on here to me. 
I look for anything on this number below 8. This is at 29.1, which means the company is massively overvalued right now. Um, frankly, because it's a very good looking company. This is why it's overvalued right now. People are buying a stock. Um, I'm assuming people think it's going to go up, although <laughs> that might be interesting because of the, um, the stock price cratering in the last, what, six months is that? Six, seven months almost? Um, I would want to know why that happened. But, uh, I'm just reading through this, um, nothing of interest in there, maybe something to do with the Chinese uh, Communist Party, some rulings there, um, maybe, I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter anyways because they're so overvalued, um, I wouldn't get that far at this stage because they're so enormously overvalued. Frankly, again, I look for anything under 8, they're at 29.1, that's not even close. If they were close, I would add them to my watch list and consider moving them forward but they also have other questions like their margins cratering um stuff like that that i mentioned um that's a big one though the margins cratering i would want to know why that happened and why it's continued to happen frankly um i want to know why their stock cratered since january or since december um and some of the other things we talked about but frankly they're just overvalued right now anyway so i wouldn't get to answer those questions because i don't i'm not going to get to that stage of my analysis if you own the stock i'd love to hear why why their shares have cratered since um, January. I'd also, I, I frankly, I just love context. <laughs> I'd also love context, if you have it, on why their margins have cratered. Um, were my guesses right based on previous experience? Is it something else that I may not have thought of? Um, love to learn that. Um, if I miss anything, if I didn't explain something well enough, let me know in the comments below. If, um, if you want me to look at a stock like this for you, let me know. In the comments below for every video for the last three four months and going forward at least the next month is have been requested by viewers if you want me to request or if you want me to look at a stock anywhere in the world for you i will do so if it meets three criteria can't be a bank i don't evaluate banks can't be an insurance company because you have to dig into their 10ks um, to evaluate them and it has to be producing revenue why does it have to be producing revenue because i evaluated <laughs> A couple companies from um, from viewers then they weren't producing revenue and because i don't care about story and that kind of stuff now videos were pretty much useless and boring so if it meets those three criteria i'll look at it anywhere in the world for you um and get you some thoughts on it if you like this video thanks so much for watching first of all um make sure to like love share subscribe comment and if you do subscribe make sure to hit the notification bell because we're releasing new videos all the time if you're listening on the podcast again much appreciated um Make sure you do all that same stuff, but all in the podcast specifically. We all also really appreciate a review because the more reviews, views, and um, listens we get to our content, the more people we can help. If you're looking to become a better investor faster, make sure to check out the links below where you can get access to our five free gifts, which includes the full and narrow uh, preliminary analysis worksheet, which is the visual part, which is stage one of my analysis structure. Um, stage two is the actual worksheet, and doing that, you can get that in five free gifts. Um, plus for the free gifts uh, below for free. You can also get a free copy of my, a PDF copy of my book, How to Value Invest, and a free copy of our guide, Seven Tips to Picking Great Stocks and Three Times You Must Sell. You can get th all three of those for free at the links below. And if you're looking for more specific help from me on how to become a better investor faster, make sure to check out the information on our newly relaunched masterclass below. I'm very excited. Looking to get as many people as, as we can in there to help. Um, you guys as much as we possibly can love this program um but if you want more information on that make sure to check out that and the links below as well and until next time have a great day talk soon bye